sodium glucose co-transporter 2 SGLT2 inhibitors also called glyphosins are a new group of oral medications used for treating type 2 diabetes. Dapagliflozin, canagliflozin and impagliflozin belong to this class of anti-diabetic medicine. Sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors are found to enhance blood sugar control, reduce body weight, decrease systolic and diastolic blood pressure and provides significant cardiovascular benefits to diabetic patients. However, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors are double-edged sword having several serious adverse reactions. Number of warning have been issued by U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the patients taking these medications. In September 2015, the FDA strengthened the warnings related to the increased risk of bone fractures and added new information about decreased bone mineral density to the labels for canagliflozin. In 2016 the U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued the warning about the risk of acute kidney injury for the type 2 diabetes medicines canagliflozin and dapagliflozin. In 2017, Based on two large clinical trials, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration added warning of increased risk of leg and foot amputations by use of canagliflozin in treatment of type 2 diabetes. In 2018 the U.S. Food and Drug Administration issued warning regarding cases of a rare but serious infection of the genitals and area around the genitals. This serious rare infection, called necrotizing fasciitis of the perineum, is also referred to as Fournier's gangrene. The most common adverse side effect to sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors is urinary tract infections. The raised concentrations of glucose in the urine can facilitate the onset of fungal infections. Sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors can cause ulysemic ketoacidosis. Unlike diabetic ketoacidosis, Ulysemic diabetic ketoacidosis occur without a significant increase in blood glucose levels. Sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors induces a rapid increase in urinary glucose excretion. Because of the decline in glucose levels, plasma insulin levels also decrease with a compensatory increase in glucagon levels. This shift in hormones that is lowering of insulin to glucagon ratio stimulates lipolysis and ketogenesis which eventually causing ketoacidosis. In 2015 U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, added risks of ketoacidosis in the labeling warnings.